Hello and welcome back to another edition of the Nathan Lock Podcast. We're delighted to be joined by Jack Powell, former Ebbsfleet United player, got promoted with Ebbsfleet, went to the National League playoffs with Ebbsfleet, uh, played for Maidstone in Kent, now playing in the league with Crawley and started his career with West Ham and Millwall. So Jack, how are you doing? All good, thanks mate. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. How have you been uh, coping during lockdown? Yeah, all right. I um, actually had a little watch of uh, Danny Kedwell's podcast yesterday and it's mm. quite similar. I think the first uh, month or so I was doing all right and then the last couple of weeks has been tough. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's, it's okay. Like it's uh, managed to put my mind to a couple of different other things that you wouldn't usually do. So uh, it's been interesting, I guess. Mm. And uh, in terms of football... Um, as Nathan said, I believe you started at West Ham. Uh, how did you get into football? Um, it was just in my family, to be honest. Um, my dad played football. Um, I used to go and watch him on Saturdays and Sundays. Um, and then I just took to it, really. I just think that I like, had some natural talent um, that just come through the family. And then uh, started to play for a Sunday league team and then got picked up by West Ham when I was quite young. Uh, you signed for Millwall. Um, was it a bit of a sort of when you got there? Was it a bit of a sort of a uh, sort of Millwall West Ham sort of thing? Like, was there a bit of a yeah of weird look at when you got in? Yeah, um, strange because I was brought up like in a West Ham family. Um, all my family support West Ham, um, so obviously playing for them as as a kid and coming through their academy and stuff, making the jump to Millwall. Um, was weird because like you kind of get brought up uh, being told Millwall were this and Millwall were that. And then um, they gave me the opportunity to to move on in my career. Um, and I didn't really look at it like the rivalry thing at all, really. Like I was just happy to be playing football and they gave me an offer of having another professional contract. So um, as you get a bit older, you kind of look at it as, um, as a job in a way. Um, so yeah, it it was strange. I had some uh, some abuse on Twitter and stuff, uh, <laughs> but it's all part and parcel of it. Like I don't really look at it like oh, they hate each other, blah blah blah. That's kind of something that the supporters and the fans get mixed up in. Not so much the, not so much the players. And um, you you made your debut uh, in the League Cup. Was that good? Yeah, it was great. Um, it was against Wickham as a substitute. That was my first appearance, like senior appearance. Um, it kind of just come not out of the blue. I think that like, I was doing well in in uh, Mills kind of under twenty ones at the time, um, and then Ian Holloway came in, and his style of football kind of suited me a bit more than uh, the previous manager. Um, so he just gave me the opportunity. It was weird. I think I think we had, I think we had ten men actually. I think we had ten men. And we was one nil up. So. We was under pressure a little bit, um, but no, it was just good to get out and kind of like get my first senior appearance in front of in front of a decent crowd and that and uh, at a nice ground as well. To be fair, at, at Millwall, so um, it was kind of a bit of a dream come true, really. Also, in that season, you made some with, with Millwall struggling a little bit. You got to make some appearances in the championship. Um, was that a bit a bit of a step up from obviously youth football to to play in a few games in the championship? Yeah, massive stuff up. Um, something that um, I say probably initially, I don't know. In, lo- over the over the course of the season, probably kind of wasn't fully ready for it. Um, but like for the one or two games that I did get right at the beginning, obviously I went on to make kind of like five appearances, I think, in the championship. But for the early games, um, I did really, really well. Um, I played well in the other games as well, but. Um, it was hard to kind of sustain um, the performances when I was kind of in and out of the team. Um, but massive step up physically, um, technically as well, just what it means to people. Just def- like, I just felt like everyone was kind of a monster in a way. Like Everyone ran really fast and everyone was really strong. And I remember my lungs were like, felt like they was going to burst out my chest um, in my first championship game. Um, but I took to it well and I enjoyed it and I, I thought I did really well I got some really good comments from the manager at the time and um, there was a bit of a hype at the time as well so um, it was a good time to be fair 
you mm. spent some time on on loan from from Millwall, where you went on loan sort of Braintree. Um, obviously, you know, going from the Den to Braintree is a bit. Is was that a bit of a culture shock? Um, possibly, but I wanted to play somewhere. Uh, I wanted to play regularly. Um, I don't know, really. I don't, for me, I, I guess, yeah, that was. I'd already been on loan at Concord Rangers by then, actually. So oh, yeah. I was kind of used to it. Like Concord and Braintree are quite similar, to be fair. No. Um, Concord was a really good club, um, so I'd done a couple of months there. So I guess Concord at first, even though I like to think that I adapted really well and really quickly, um, that was a little bit of a shock to kind of like see the part-time um, football, uh, the facilities that they had and, um, yeah, and just seeing players kind of turning up from work and just playing straight away. Like, I just thought that was quite crazy. Like, I knew it happened, but actually being involved in it is, is a bit of a different story. Um, but yeah, Braintree, it's a good little club, but it's, uh, it's a it's a strange ground and uh, facilities are not great. But it's not really something that's really ever really affected me not having the facilities and stuff. Um, so I went there and just and give it my best. And Braintree were, really, were a really good side at the time. Um, played under obviously a really good manager. Um, so yeah, that was a good time as well. Mm -hmm. And then in in the summer of twenty sixteen, um, you left Millwall. Was it tough to leave Millwall? Yeah, it was actually, um, because obviously they gave me my first senior appearance, um, gave me the opportunity to play in the championship. Um, but with the manager, it was strange because the manager who gave me my first game um, got sacked, uh, which hit Ian Holloway. And then my under-21s manager, who's obviously a Millwall legend, Neil Harris, um, he got the job. Um, and he brought me to the club to the 21s and I was the captain of the under 21s um, so I sort of thought that I was just going to play like every game really like. but it was just a matter of like style of football um, under Holloway I think Neil Harris believed that I should have been playing every game because of the way we played and then Harris brought back kind of the old fashioned uh, Millwall style which is like 4-4-2 put it in the channel um, at the time, I probably wasn't really suited to playing that style of football, so I understood why he wasn't playing me. Um, but yeah, it was kind of like obviously, even just you guys just mentioning about speaking, like obviously Ebsley and whatever else. Like I look back on on my career, like in general, and it's it's kind of upsetting to move on from clubs. At the time, you don't really see it, like and you don't really think about it. But um, I guess in a way, yeah, like. I look back and think that um, it's maybe something that that might have been, but I don't really regret anything or um, have any any bad memories from it. Signed for for Fleet, as you say, um, after a trial period. We we ask a lot of players like what were sort of Dara's ambition, but obviously you signed when we were still in the National League South. Obviously, we selected Kedders, Chris Bush. Obviously, you signed at different times. Um, what were Dara's ambitions? And what was what was the dressing room like? Obviously, after losing sort of that playoff final the year before. Um, I never really heard about it to be honest. Like, I, no one, no one spoke about it. I didn't. Maybe it was just like the mentality was just to keep on winning because regardless of losing in the playoff final, they were obviously a team that that won a lot. Like, I think we used to look at like even over the course of my season and the season before, we used to look at like the points per game ratio and it's something like it was over two points per game. Like the the win percentage was was really high. So like, if if you lose one game or like, just, I mean, in a playoff final, doesn't mean you're not a winning team. Um, obviously, it's probably the most important one to lose, which is not ideal. But um, I didn't hear anything about it at all. To be honest, like, it was just like coming in. It felt like I was coming into a brand new team, like as if like we'd just been put together for this season. Um, you didn't hear nothing about the history or anything like that. Um, it was just kind of this is the season that we're gonna we're gonna win the league. Obviously, we didn't win the league, but yeah. <laughs> you mentioned uh, sort of playing a quite a direct style uh, at Millwall. But in Fleet that season, we would 
especially you sort of jury that that Dino and sort of in that middle we would sort of boss teams especially especially at home with the pitch we had we could just pass it around what was it like as you playing that sort of passing football under Darrow in that season oh you probably didn't mention probably the best player out of uh, in the team at the time um, who was unbelievable that season and suited that style of play was Sam Deering oh, of course, he was um, he was unbelievable that season and we uh we played. We had a, like, a bit of a connection, and we played really well together. Um, I enjoyed playing with Sam. He was good. Obviously, Dukes he came. Andy Jury came, kind of like halfway through the season. Um, we signed him a little bit later, but he was really important signing because we was having a bit of a tough time around Christmas. And I think when he came in, I think we went on like a thirty-one game unbeaten run or something. Yes, I really. Which is just mad. So he he was really important. Obviously. You know, gave us a balance. Um, he likes doing the ugly stuff, and us three likes playing football. But Dino can play as well. Obviously, I played with him at Aldershot and enjoyed a little bit of success there when I, I went recently. Um, but yeah, like when when the pitch was good, <laughs> um, we used to destroy some teams. To be fair, it's uh, it's fond memories actually. Uh, we used to get teams coming who were the so-called like kind of challengers for us. Um, and we just used to brush them aside quite easily, to be honest. Um, through hard work, obviously, but in terms of quality, like we was, we was probably by far the best team in the league. Um, even though the table didn't show it in the end. And um, we obviously ended up going through um, by winning the playoffs. Um, how did it feel to win the playoffs? Um, it was strange because I, um, I think I. I come out of the team for a bit when Dukes he came in, um, which was fine. Like I was, I was fairly young at the time. I was quite inexperienced in terms of the amount of games that I played, um, and obviously we was winning as well. Um, so Dukes he came in, he was playing. We was winning games. I was kind of being used more as a sub, and then towards the end of the season, I got back in the team. I think I played like the last ten games of the season. Um, then obviously we finished second. Um, into the playoffs, played in the semi-finals, both games against Hampton and Richmond. And then I didn't start in the final. <laughs> and um, I hated Darryl McMahon for that. <laughs> um, at the time, I was raging, to be fair. I couldn't believe it. Like I'd started like the last 10 games, played in both semi-finals. But, I don't know, managers make decisions and I came on at half-time and managed to play a part in, in winning. Um, but it was a great experience like to be involved in such big games I think as well because like there was such an expectancy and a pressure on Ebsleet. Um it made it even bigger um, yeah like you kind of you didn't really feel the pressure like because we felt we, we were a good team and, and we were going to win anyway but it was kind of like the build up where like we was playing Hampton and Hampton wasn't even in the playoffs and it was we was all a bit like like they've got the opportunity we never thought we was going to lose but they got the opportunity to beat us when they didn't really deserve to. Um, but yeah, like we obviously done the job on Ham on Hampton and and then went on to Chelmsford. So it was a really good experience. The atmosphere was really good in all the games. Um, the final was just a crazy day. Like I watched back the highlights the other day because uh, I think it was like the was it three years ago? Like yeah, three, years, three ago. years ago, like a few a week ago or something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, like some really, really good memories. What were those celebrations like? Obviously, we went 1 0 down, and then uh, Dave and uh, Darren got those two goals. And obviously, you went to Dubai, was it? Was that good? <laughs> yeah, crazy, really. Um, obviously, Cookie got sent off as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, which just, like, that was probably like the catalyst for me coming on at half time, actually, to be fair. So, Cookie done me a favour. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, I think. The way that it went was that obviously you had Keds on as well. Keds Keds had broken his arm, so Keds didn't play like in a, quite a few of the games leading up to it. But obviously, like he was our he was our main guy. Like he was our he was one of our captains. Like do you know what I mean? So like he came back and he was fit. So I understood why the manager wanted to get him in a team. Aaron McLean was playing really experienced. Latin was playing well, so he wanted to get them two up front. So that was the reason why I didn't play. Um, and then it turned out that Cookie got sent off the manager felt like we obviously needed another midfield player and 
and uh, we needed to keep the ball a little bit and uh, Keds then came off and I came on. Um, but yeah, obviously we got rewarded by going to Dubai, which is something that you don't really hear every day for a conference south promotion <laughs> side. Um, it, was, it was a bit surreal to be fair. Like I'd heard about like the rumours that like, I heard they even went to Dubai for winning Kent Senior Cup, which is just, just madness. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, like I heard the rumours that was what was going to happen, and we was kind of like yeah, like we'll see, like we'll believe it when we see it, sort of thing. And we went out that evening, uh, that night of the playoff final, and then we got a phone call the next day just saying uh, we need to be ready on Thursday um, to go to Dubai and just, just uh, yeah, just just enjoy the successful season, which was it was good. It was it was a really good time, like with with obviously friends and. Obviously, now it's sort of had to come to a bit of an end. Like, you look back on that and you think to yourself, oh, like, unbelievable time. Mm. And, and then the, the the year after in the National League, um, we'll talk about the certain playoff games uh, in, the, in a few minutes. But um, just the fact that we got to the playoffs, um, how great was that? Yeah, I think it's something that we believe that we could do. Like, there was, so, there was a massive belief in that change room. Like, just... Mm. Obviously, I think we just had a good mix of like players that were. I think the year before, although I didn't really hear much about it, looking at it, like I think there was quite an experienced team, um, but not much youth in that team. Not probably. Um, obviously, all all the senior lads that I played with was a, were really hungry to do well. But sometimes that kind of hunger can can leave some people. Uh, I'm not saying that was the case, but that's probably what the young lads like me. And Darren McQueen, um, Jack Connors, uh, them sort of players brought to to us when we when we got promoted, and then we went and went and got in the playoffs again. Like I say, something that we believed that we could do. Like we played against Woking, I think, in the FA Trophy, um, and we beat them one 0 away in the Conference South season, um, and they were obviously in the in the in the National League at the time. So like we kind of. We didn't use that as like kind of a platform to say, oh, you know, we're good enough to compete because Woking wasn't particularly a good team at that time, I don't think. But like we kind of just talked to ourselves, like even though it was a tough game, like they had, I think Gozi Ugu was playing for Woking at the time and uh, he was a handful. Um, but we went and beat them and we just kind of thought to ourselves, like we've, we've obviously got a good enough team to play in the National League. Like we've got players that have played in the, in the Football League, like a lot of players that have played in the Football League. So, we just took it game by game. Like it's a bit of a cliche, but um, I think we had our ups and downs in that season as well. Like we had, like we stopped we, like, we the season well, but we just drew loads of games at the start. Yeah, like we we have like nine or ten draws in a row. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Yeah, that's crazy. Like so, that obviously meant that we dropped a lot of points. Like we, that was part of our unbeaten run as well. Like the thirty-one games that I'm talking about. But it's kind of yeah. like you sort of hope you're better off, obviously, like losing and, and winning than drawing too. So. Um, although we was unbeaten, we wasn't really picking up the points that we needed. Um, but we always seemed to come good after Christmas. That's what we did the year before. Um, we come good after Christmas, so we did the same thing again. And um, yeah, it was it was unbelievable to get in the in the playoffs. Like there was a bit, there was a few more like kind of I don't know, probably a few more nerves that that time around. Like talking away, like I remember it was that was that was a weird, horrible game. Like um because they were like that season they were a bad side like they didn't they didn't do very well i think they got relegated didn't they yeah they got relegated that season they were, we were, they were already relegated i think yeah already relegated like uh, and like it was weird it was almost like they probably played their best game against us like last game of the season like they were actually decent and we was thinking to ourselves wow like they got relegated and i think we we ended up drawing didn't we um, yeah i think jack on the yeah. yeah uh across yeah, <laughs> don't tell him I said that. <laughs> that was his only goal, I think. For obviously. <laughs> obviously, you played a big part in those playoffs. Um, obviously, that all shot game and the tram again. You got a, a beautiful assist for Luke Colson. Unfortunately, you missed I think the second or third penalty in the all shot game. What was that game like? Yeah. Um, all the shot were good, so it was like we knew it was going to be tough, like to go to their place as well. Do you know what I mean? Like they were they had. If you look at their team, they had, they had a very good team at the time. Um, obviously, like I say, the belief was strong. We thought we thought we could win. Um, 
But just the format of the playoffs that year, obviously, you don't get two legs. It's just one game, which we sort of lacked in a way. Like we just thought whoever's the best team on day will win it. Um, and yeah, like we went there. I think we played all right, to be fair. Like all the shots, they dominated the ball every time we played against them, especially at their ground. Like they just they kept the ball for fun. Like they just have it round the back, but didn't really like didn't really penetrate or like didn't really hurt us and. We were quite dangerous, like when we won the ball back. And I remember, obviously, we got the penalty in, during the game, didn't we? I think it was in the second half. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, second half. Kids. And um, yeah, I, I think a, be, a ball got played into me, and I just kind of knocked it around the corner to Keds. Keds used his pace <laughs> to uh, <laughs> beat uh, <laughs> to beat Reynolds, and Reynolds brought him down, got a penalty. Um, he should have been sent off. I don't think he got sent off, did he? Yeah, he got. Uh, yeah, he, he should have been sent off. Right. I don't know how he didn't get sent off for that. He's, he's the last. Back as well. Yeah, it's crazy. But um, obviously, penalties are penalties. It's like, keep a save, Keds penalty. Um, and then when they scored, like you're just like, oh. I just thought, like, I sort of thought, surely not. Like, surely you think that you're going to get one more chance. All them sort of cliches, like, oh, there'll be one chance for us and whatever else. But, you just kind of like, oh, you sort of, you are defeated in a way. Like you put so much effort into it. Like all the shot as well. Like second half, we just, I think, yeah, second half. Like it's a bit uphill. And like, obviously, I haven't played there now. When you're playing, you don't really notice it. But in that game, like I felt like I was just running uphill, like such a bad hill. Like and it was probably just like a bit of fatigue, like just mental fatigue. Um, played the whole hundred and twenty minutes. Obviously, was happy to take a penalty. Like I've always took penalties. Like ever since I was young, really. Usually, always take the first penalty. But um, I think like some other people wasn't probably as comfortable taking the penalty. So I think those sort of people want to take their penalty first because then there's always chance, always a chance that you get back in it. Sort of thing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like the fifth penalty. Like is obviously like the really pressure penalty and stuff. So. Um, Ended up, yeah, being third. I didn't really, I didn't really care where I wanted to be. I sort of wanted to be fifth, like just hoping that I might take the, the winning one, like what kid said about his Wimbledon penalty. Um, but I ended up being put third. I didn't really mind, and uh, it was weird because like now I've got older. Obviously, if I was to take a penalty, I've I put it in all different places. But when I was younger, I used to just put my penalties like bottom right all the time, so the keepers mm-hmm. left, so the opposite of what I did against all the shot. Yeah, but like. Darryl McMahon is weird because Darryl McMahon, obviously the manager at the time, like during the playoffs and that, he was prompting me to watch like videos of um, Zinedine Zidane, and he was just like, look, just just watch Zidane, like he, that he's that he's that kind of guy, like he's just like obviously really like into his football, like just a football person, and just like always looked at players that like he felt that like I could compare myself to. Obviously, like it's in a a crazy comparison, but like it's always kind of looking at the best and whatever and. Uh, there's a few others like Deli Ali and stuff when he was scoring loads of goals at Spurs and when I was playing like number 10 for Epsley, he wanted me to watch him. So he wanted me to watch certain players. So he told me to watch Zidane like in the it in the build up to the towards the end of the season. And um it's weird because like this is honestly like exactly how it went. Like Zidane's penalties, like I watched a lot of his penalties on YouTube and stuff, and he always, apart from the one that he dinked down the middle, most of the time like he wrapped it to the corner that I that I put it in. So that's the reason why I went in that corner. That is that is actually the reason. Um, and like now I watch it back, and like the keeper went so early. It wasn't even. I don't. It was. It was a nice height for the keeper, but it was actually quite away in the corner. But the keeper went so early. Like, yeah. Like if if he, like if the keeper just went the other way or just stood there, you'd think, oh, that was a, that was a good penalty. Like it was. It was in. It's actually in the corner. So, but I missed it. So. It, it, it didn't really matter. It was it was a decent save, and then they had like two penalties or three penalties to win, I think. Yeah, yeah, like, they had four chances if they saved them, something like that. Yeah, so like obviously we was just all like, that's it, that's like, done. Like, what's the chances of them missing two or three? Like, it's just not going to happen, is it? Like, and then I think mm. obviously I played with Kinsella. Kinsella hit the post. Um, mm. I think Fabian Robert missed one. And then Rancy had the chance to score the winning penalty. Like, I was just like, who would have thought it? Like, but he was, he was smart because the keeper saved, I think he saved a couple of penalties, like, including my one, in the same side. And then Rancy put it in the other corner. Mm. So it was, 
I don't know whether he worked that out at the time, but looking back now, it's obviously like <laughs> that was a keeper strong side. Like Francis, he was as cool as you like. To be fair, like I think Francis has got that mentality where he's just like, like I can just do anything. Like I'm just that kind of like nothing really phases him. Like he just he just goes with the flow. Like and he just gets his gets his job done. And and he's the sort of person that you probably want to take that sort of penalty. To be fair, even though like if you look through our squad, you probably wouldn't say, oh, Dean Martz has got to take this penalty. Like, actually looking at it now in terms of his mentality and stuff, because that's what I think a lot of penalties are about. Um, he was a perfect person for that penalty and he just, he slotted it away. Obviously, and he, he set up the, he set up the goal for Winfield as well, the, the equaliser. Um, yeah. Which he told me about a few times when we was at Old <laughs> I didn't even realise, to be honest, like, there's a, there's a in all, like, the elation of it, I didn't even, like, <laughs> yeah, I didn't even think like, oh, Rancy got that assist, and then he just kept talking about it. Well, no, I went back to all the shot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, obviously, we went, we went on, and um, we 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 then placed Tranmere, and um, I can remember that the first goal, the assist you got, you know, you just thought, why are you crossing it from there? And you know, it's straight on uh, Colson's head, and you know, he's not much of a header, but he's gone top corner, and you know, we're one nil up. Uh, talk me through that game. Yeah. I think the goal itself, um, goal. yeah, like it's probably something that will probably only happen like <laughs> one in a million, really. Like you say, like across from so deep to someone who's not particularly like amazing in the air, or I think he's decent in the air, of course, but like you wouldn't say, oh, wow, like cross it so that course can get on the end of it. Um, so yeah, it was just one of those, just one of those perfect moments, really. Like I spotted the run, I think. I think in their moments you sort of you you sort of predict what what's going to happen. Like, do you know what I mean? And like even to the point where like the position where the keeper would be if you put that cross in and the type of header that he would he would have to he would have to put on the end of it. It's not like there's so much pace on the ball. I guess that he kind of just had to just help it on in a way. Like it's not like one of those where you had to get up and head it down. And and um, yeah, it's just one of those perfect ones. Really, like it was a great header. Um, it was a really good start for us. Like we um. That was a massive, massive occasion. Like, it, it, we knew it was going to be tough because like they hadn't played the game. Obviously, they just went straight into a one-leg home semi-final. Uh, they didn't have to play in the quarter-final, obviously, because of the new format and stuff. Um, but we prepared really well. Like we travelled up. Like we'd we'd done all like cryo chambers on the way, and like absolutely like in terms of the preparation and stuff was was really good, spot on. Like I felt absolutely fine. Like, I was. I was feeling good. I think after the course's goal, he got injured, which was a, was a bit, yeah. bit of a blow. Um, I think Cookie then come on, uh, if Miles. I remember rightly. Was it Miles? Yeah, it was Miles and he scored, I think. Oh, yeah, Miles come on and scored, yeah. So, was Cookie still there? I think he went on loan to like Woking or something. Ah, oh, right, okay. Yeah, so Miles came on for course in the first half. But it was, it was good, like, the thing was, like, I was I was excited because, like, I've been to Tranmere with Braintree <laughs> and we won. We beat Tranmere 2-1. And, like we, like, we just silenced their fans. Like, I'd already won there. Like, it's weird in football. I feel like you kind of, you have grounds that you kind of always win at and grounds sometimes you don't. So, I was just like, yeah, like, we're going to win because, like, I'd won there before. I was just confident. Like, I just felt like it was just meant to be for us, like, like I mentioned Ked's podcast, like he said it was meant to be for Wimbledon and I felt like that was kinda of like for us in a way, but obviously Tram Tranmere probably thought the same thing. So yeah. um yeah, like to take the that was gutting because like to take the lead like twice in that sort of game where we was like obviously more fatigued again, like I had quite a few like um graps with Dal McMahon that season probably like not that I ever really like voiced it but like in my head I was fuming because he took me off after like 70 minutes and physically I felt fine and obviously like I had an old man like Jury still running around um he should have took him off really even though Jury was really good for us he was definitely more tired than me because I remember Rancy and Jury saying to each other like we're we're done like our legs are finished we was playing the midfield three together, mm. and um, I felt absolutely fine. So I couldn't believe it. Like, and now I speak to Daryl like, about it now, and like he says to me, like if at the time you would have just said like I'm fresh, like just just leave me. Like he said I would have changed the stuff, and I was like mm, I'm not sure about that. But um, 
yeah, that's just all things that we talk about now. Like in hindsight, I guess you look back and it's it's easier it's easier to kind of make decisions and and um, think about things that you might have done differently. But the whole day was just an amazing atmosphere. Like probably like after the playoff final, probably like the second biggest game that I've played in my career. Obviously, because it was a league above, uh, maybe it was on par, and because it was at Tranmere, there was like ten thousand fans. Um, yeah, it was just a huge occasion. Like, it was just a shame, really. Like, I think the biggest thing that I always say to people is that we took the lead twice. Like, that was probably the most gutting thing. If we was like three one down or like three nil down, two nil down, and then we came back and like two all extra time, whatever, and it's a bit different because the game was never really in your grasp. But we kind of had the game in our grasp twice. Um, and unfortunately, yeah, they was they was probably. To be fair, they was they were probably better than us. Like they they were better than us all season, um, so they probably deserved it. So, um, in ter- like we've seen that you've taken quite a few free kicks, um, for Ebster and scored a few goals from free kicks. Um, have you always been a free kick taker? Yeah, ever since I was young, I used to take them at West Ham. Um, just always put my foot, myself forward for like free kicks, penalties, and stuff. I used to take free kicks and penalties at West Ham. Um, after missing in a playoff playoffs, my penalties. I'm, I don't really. There's usually someone else that wants to take penalties a bit more than me. Um, like I say, I don't mind them, but I'll always put myself forward for free kicks. Um, and I seem to have kind of got a bit of a run up that I just do over and over again and try and strike the ball in the same way. It's a bit of a routine, really. Um, and it was su- successful, like really successful. Absolutely, obviously, scored quite a few. Managed to get one at Maidstone when I went there, um, and I'm still confident that I'll score quite a few more like in my career. To be fair, um, if you can kind of get a bit of a routine and you strike the ball a certain way, like there's always a chance that you're you're going to score a fair few. Um, but it's it's quite a difficult thing to do. It's a difficult technique, really. So um, you don't really see that many free kicks being scored. So uh, it's something that I've always done and something that I enjoy doing. Obviously, moving on to, to the next season, uh, you had about two and a half months in that season with Fleet. Um, was it disappointing for Fleet to not be like pushing for those playoffs again? We 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 done okay, but like we just weren't like what we had last season. Yeah, it was weird, really. Like I think sometimes maybe that like, Daryl, like, as a manager, um, you're looking for ways to improve, which is obviously the right, right thing to do. Even though we'd gone and got in the playoffs, that. Like, you're probably looking at ways where we can possibly go and win the league, I guess. Um, so there were certain players that were brought in to probably help us do that. Um, and I wouldn't say it disrupted us in any way, but like um, you need that to gel again. Like You need that to merge in the right way and it don't always really come together. Um, so I found myself kind of in and, in and out of the team a little bit that season. Um, I was a little bit aggrieved again, like really, like because I'd done really well in pre-season. I remember that pre-season, like um, me and Ibu had played a lot together. He'd scored a lot of goals in pre-season. I'd set up a, quite a few of them, um, played a lot almost every minute, trained every minute of the season, and then didn't start the first game, um, which was against was Chesterfield, I think. Chesterfield at home, yeah, yeah, yeah. nil-nil. Didn't start. Um, and then started Orient away the next game and done really well. Like, I thought we played really well that day. Um, but then still found myself in and out of the team. Um, obviously, there was a lot going on then. Like, that was probably when a little, a little while after that, um, things started to go a little bit, a little bit wrong uh, off the pitch. And that obviously transcends onto the pitch. Um, so it's really frustrating, like kind of like I say, when when you got in touch to to say, can we have a chat about kind of absolute days and stuff? Like I look back now and I just think, oh, it's a shame that that kind of had to come to an end because I'm pretty sure that if it would have carried on the way it was, like we probably would have possibly like, been promoted, maybe again, like been in the league by now. Um, so yeah, and even if we wasn't like the, if we was all still together. It, we would have given it a good go every year of I think of, of of getting promoted and that would have been amazing to get promoted from Conference South up into the league. Um, and then see how that club 
uh, would have progressed and the plans that it had off the pitch, if that would have come to fruition, it would have been incredible. Um, so then you, you moved to, to Maidstone and um, as I said at the time, it was a bit of a shock from all the Ebb State fans and everything. Um, so why did you decide to go to Maidstone? Um, I think at the time, like, it was just purely just for football reasons, like mainly for football reasons. I just wanted to play regularly. I knew that at Maidstone I was going to get the opportunity to play regularly as long as I kind of performed. And that was probably the issue with Ebbsleet because there was games where I felt like I'd played well and then the next game I didn't play for Ebbsleet. And obviously the competition was higher, but you expect to keep your shirt really. like um, At Orient, like, I felt like I probably had one of my best games for Ebbsleet. Like, um, played really, really well. Um, and then I think my last game for Ebbsleet was Bromley at home. Yeah, you scored a free kick, I think. I scored a free kick in that game. Like, I thought I played well. I know we lost, but I thought I had a decent game. And the game after Bromley, I, I wasn't playing. Um, and it was quite rare that, like, after scoring a goal, like, that I wouldn't play the next game. That 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 was un, that was unusual at Ebbsleet. That was, like, obviously, if, if it happened before, then you'd understand. But, like, I'd never really, like, played decent and scored and, and um, not played the next game. So I just wanted to really go on loan. Like, I just wanted to go on loan and just get like a month of games under my belt. Like, I know there was a busy period coming up then and it would have been like seven or eight games if I went out on loan for a month. Um, and then I thought, I, I went to Maidstone's ground. Like I went to Maidstone's ground like, after training. Um, like It was good. Like I say good. I, um, I trained with Ebbsleet. Like we had a bit of a fun day, like trained really well, like done some really good stuff in training. Um and then obviously I was leaving that day and I knew I was leaving like before, like and I thought I was going on loan. Um so I drove to Maidstone's ground, that like, with my agent. And uh I met their guys there, obviously Harry Wheeler, Bill Williams. Um and I was ready to just sign alone and just and just play straight away, really. And then I was there for quite a while, and it was kind of like, oh, you know, like Maidstone want to do it on a permanent. And I was sort of like, well, no, like I don't really want to do a permanent. Like, and then there was like Maidstone wanted to give me another year on top of my contract, and uh, Maidstone didn't play, didn't pay wages through the summer, and Ebbsleet did, and it was so much stuff like kind of like trying to get sorted. And um, in the midst of it, all, obviously, they asked to do it permanently. I didn't really want to, but then Ebsley kind of said, well, yeah, like, you can do it permanent. Right. Um, and I was like, well, if you, if you are happy for me to go permanent, then I'm not going to say, oh, no, like, I really want to stay. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, mm. he was happy for me to kind of leave. So, like, I'll just, I'll just go. Like, do you know what I mean? I, I wasn't... And I think, to be honest, now looking back at it, there was a lot of like underlying problems in terms of what was going off, on, going on off the pitch. Like, would Ebsley have really wanted me to leave? Probably not. But I think they did it more for me personally because they knew that there was kind of like some things going on maybe off the pitch, and they thought to themselves, "Well, we'll let Jack go and do what he needs to do. He's guaranteed, obviously, to to be paid." Like on time obviously and all that sort of stuff so um then obviously ha having heard like not heard about it but put two and two together like i was kind of like then it become like a, almost like a financial decision as well um so yeah like firstly that like, i wanted to play regularly and then after that i realized that kind of i was i was more likely to be paid on time and obviously with a young family and stuff like that was quite important to me um, so yeah, those those were the two reasons that I ended up leaving on a permanent deal. Last year at Mason, you had two very different managers. Obviously, Harry Wheeler, who didn't do too well at uh, Maidstone. John Steele did, and Hakan did a little bit better. But what, what was those? What were those sort of two, three managers like? Um, it was weird. Yeah, like we, yeah, Harry Wheeler had come from Billy Ricky. He was young, like he was a decent coach. Um, quite particular like he was good because like he used to do we used to do a lot of like just me him and a couple of other forwards used to do like a lot of finishing drills um where i was playing like higher up the pitch and that's like, scoring a fair few goals at, at um Ebsley. um 
I quite like that about him. Like he was he used to just pull like a small group together after training. We used to do a lot of finishing, which was which was really good. So he was good in them ways. And then like he had like some amazing ideas, like of like trying to kind of like replicate like top clubs. Like at the time, it was like Sheffield United and the way that they played uh, when they was doing really well. Um, and it was great. Like I fully believed in what he was what he was trying to do, but where there was so much pressure and and we were losing games. He didn't get the opportunity to kind of allow us to kind of play like that regularly with the same personnel. Um, so that was kind of tough. Um, I think if we would have had the opportunity to do that, we actually would have been would have been all right because we had some good players. To be fair, like looking at it now. Um, but yeah, obviously he left, and then John Steele came in. I'd heard a lot about John Steele, obviously, in football. But in between that, actually, Simon Walton and Tristan, who obviously went to Ebsley, um, they took the job and they done really well. Like we had a bit of a dodgy result against Maidenhead, where they battered us, like physically battered us. Um, but we got like we won against Hartlepool away in their first game. Um, we beat a couple of other teams and got good results and good performances. And realistically, they should have kept the job. Like, and I think re- they would have. They would have probably kept us up. I think because we was winning like fifty percent of our games with them in charge. Like, and that's what we needed to do to stay up. Um, but the club decided to bring John Steele back. Obviously, he's got a bit of an affiliation with the club, so that's understandable. I'd heard a lot about him, and I was a bit unsure where I was going to play because everyone would say like, "Oh, you know, he just wants to kick it long and." And he likes physical players and whatever else. And I'm just probably not your most physical, um, kick it long style player. Um, but he played. I played in every game for him. He gave me some freedom to kind of play the way that I wanted to play, and we was all right. Like we was, we got some decent results under him as well. But it was just too late by then. Like it was, there was too much changing going on. Um, it was just there just wasn't enough games for us to to really get it right and we lost some crucial ones like we got some good results against top teams but teams around us we got beat and um, yeah I'd say that that was quite like obviously John Stills has got his his beliefs and his ideas um, and he uses that mainly and then branches away from it and then Harry Reader was like kind of learning on the job really like inexperienced uh, but had some good ideas and had some good passion and stuff so um, it was a lot different um, but obviously neither were were particularly successful. So you played against um, Epsi in that season. I thought looking at that game going to, I was like, "Oh, Jack Powers going to score a free kick." He's just written in the stars. Was it was it good to play against your old teammates? Obviously, um, Fleet fans would like to beat Maidstone, but was a was it a bit of a weird game that one? Yeah, like so strange. Like I remember, like me and Ratsy were just like talking to each other during the game and stuff. Like, um, <laughs> But like nothing like malicious or anything like that. Just literally just chatting. Like obviously it was focused, but whenever like I don't know, someone would go down injured or whatever, or even just like a spell in the game, like he'd be chatting and and um it was just weird because like things were going wrong for Ebsley. Like Maidstone were obviously like pretty much getting relegated and you're focused on like just trying to win that game. Like I obviously desperately wanted to win that game because I'd left Ebsley. And and we actually played all right, like but Ebsley just had too much like going forward. Uh, still had quality in their team, like do you know what I mean? So um scored like a really, really good goal, like between Cheeky and Ugu. Um Yeah, it was it was weird, like I think yeah, the Ebsley fans were singing like Jack Powell was to score and stuff. Used to was probably singing that to be fair. Yeah, I think it was actually, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like, and it was almost like no one really knew what happened. Like maybe they, they just thought I wanted to leave and go and play for Maidstone. Like, I don't know. Like it's just a bit weird. But um yeah, so yeah, it was it was weird, funny in some ways, uh it was disappointing to lose. Um but it was a it was a good atmosphere. Like obviously I'd played in that game for yeah, yeah. scored a couple and um I knew what it was like to be on the other side, so was it difficult to get relegated at the end of that season as well? So your first relegation as a player? Yeah, like obviously I'd only really like, even though obviously I'd not really played like a full season until I went to Ebsfleet. Um 
and obviously only really enjoyed success even though we we ended up um losing out in the playoffs in the national league um only been successful there so to experience uh, the other side of it was strange it's horrible like it's just really horrible but it almost like it's different if i guess you have one day like last game of the season where you just get relegated like we kind of knew it was and coming it, yeah it was, it was quite far gap wasn't it yeah like it was a, it was a big gap and al- although we almost like still had a chance and we tried to keep believing like it was inevitable really like for quite a long time um so it was almost just like a bit of just a dull feeling like and just kind of like oh no one wants to get relegated and I never I never believed for one second when I went there that that was going to happen. Um I didn't even, I didn't even contemplate that at all. Um so yeah it was it was it was a horrible feeling and it was literally complete opposite as you can imagine to to the success that I'd had with Ebbsley. Um so you, you moved to Crawley this season um in the football league back in the football league was it exciting to you know back get back playing in the football league again? Yeah, I think so. I think like Obviously, I know so, but um, yeah, it was it was exciting. Um, kind of step up, but I never really like experienced the football league for long enough to to understand really the level. Especially as I've like I'm older and I'm sort of like beca- I've become now the player the kind of that I am, and um, obviously still improving, but. Um, where I'd never experienced the football league for long enough to really understand it. Like I didn't know what the level was really. Like everyone say, oh, you know, the national league's not much different to League Two and that sort of thing. But until you you're there, you, you don't really know. And uh, I was excited to challenge myself again. Um, I felt like I needed kind of that challenge because even though I got relegated with Maidstone, like I'd done really well the year before with Ebbsley and knew that I was good enough to play in the national league and back to myself to be good enough to play in the league and um it was exciting to go there and I just I just took the opportunity I'd like offer um or offers in the national league. Um but I just wanted to play the highest the highest level possible so I backed myself to go there and and play. So yeah. Obviously you mentioned uh, you, a lot of people say there's not much of a step up between National League and the football league. Did you feel that step up? I know you didn't play too many games, but did you feel that step up with the people you were playing with and the training and stuff? Um, the way that I describe it now, like, it's strange because I feel like there's a lot of like technical. There's a lot of quality like in in the national league. There's a lot of quality players that drop into the national league and technically really good. And obviously with Ebsley, that's the way that I judge it really because. I spent a lot of time there and we had some really good players. So, like, if you compare the quality of our squad at Ebsley compared to the quality of the squad at Crawley, like, it's very similar. Like, we, we've got kind of, yeah, the same amounts of quality in both teams. But physically, like, Crawley's squad is probably better than, than Ebsley's squad. Um, so, it becomes difficult because... The quality really isn't that much different, but everyone's physically better. So then, realistically, it kind of makes it harder. Um, people say that like, as you go up the levels, it gets easier, kind of thing. But um, I don't think that really counts at League Two. Um, yeah, so like everyone's kind of more robust. Everyone's in your face more, and obviously, because technically the players aren't like amazingly better than than the National League. It's not like then it becomes easier. Like for example, in the Championship. The players are so good technically that even if they were that good physically, because you could all handle the ball, like it made it kind of easier. Mm. Whereas that's not really the case, I don't think in in League Two. Like, don't get me wrong, you get you do get some very good technical players, and some players are probably better than than League Two level. Um, but yeah, like I think this season League Two is probably similar to the National League based on what I've seen and what I know. Um, obviously, you get some really good teams and you get some really good individuals, um, but it's probably I'd probably say it's on par. Like if I if I was judging to. Um, and then, as you mentioned earlier, you went on loan to Aldershot, where you pretty much played you played pretty much every game you could at Aldershot. 
obviously you did well on that loan, but it was a little bit annoying that you couldn't like play more games in the Football League, obviously, to prove yourself in League Two, because you obviously said there isn't much of a difference in your opinion. Yeah, well, that's it, really. Like, obviously, I was a little bit reluctant. I wasn't reluctant because I'm always looking to play football, but in a way, like mentally I was thinking to myself well if I go to Aldershot I'm not really proving anything that I haven't already proved that I'd already shown that obviously that I could do really well in the National League so I was just going to prove something twice um, which wasn't really a problem but the main reason for doing it was just to get fit Um, and then I, I decided obviously we thought it was only going to be a month again but decided that I'll stay for longer and and uh go until January at least um, just to make sure I've got like, a, a good a good batch of games and played like 20 times maybe um, we had some very good results we was in really good form like, just before I left um, I think like I can't, I'm quite into my stats and stuff so like I think when I went there if the season started when I went towards the shot I think we would have been like 8th in the league which is like a decent like achievement for for where they was, obviously they they should have really got relegated. Like, mm. obviously the season before, so we was a good team. Like, I watch I watch back some of the highlights of the games that I played in for them, and and uh, I look at the players that they had, and and, and we were decent. Um, we're just a bit inexperienced, um, and that's probably where we kind of we lost games where we probably shouldn't have, and uh, we missed like a lot of chances in certain games and that, but. It was good to get out and play. Obviously, went out and played, and I had a bit of a decision to make um, in January whether I go back to Crawley or not. Um, it's kind of like my choice, really, because Crawley were doing okay. The manager was fairly happy with with his squad, but because it was a new manager, and obviously I'm always wanting to test myself, I decided to go back and and uh, and to get in their squad and and get in their team. Obviously, you mentioned you came back, and I believe you made your league debut in in that time against Plymouth. Was it good to obviously come back, as you say, you were debating whether to come back and then actually get some game time as well? Yeah, so, like I said, it was just one of them things. The manager, I think, was fairly happy. Like, the new manager was fairly happy with what he had and they were in good form. So, probably didn't really want to, like, disrupt it too much or, like, give himself more of a headache than what he already had. Um, But I just decided that I was going to go and show that I should should be in that team. So, I went back, um, obviously got on the bench a lot of times, um, come on a lot of times. Um, obviously a bit of bad timing with obviously the pandemic that's hit, but uh, I probably would have, I'd like to think I maybe would have made a start uh, by now. Um, but I had some really, really good performances off the bench. If anything, like it's, it's helped me like improve actually coming on as a sub because it's something that I've never really enjoyed doing like as a central midfield player um, but I managed to make some really good perform- performances I thought anyway um, obviously came on against Plymouth played a part in the equaliser at Plymouth and I think the biggest thing about like, the transition from National League to League 2 is obviously playing at grounds like Plymouth where like it feels more like playing for Millwall in the championship again, like, do you know what I mean? So um, that's the best thing about kind of stepping up to to League Two level and League level again. Um, what are you what are your plans? Obviously, we don't know what's coming with the this, what happened with the season or anything, but yeah, um, I believe you're on a two year contract at Crawley. So do you want to just you know, stay yeah. there and start to get more game time and and obviously uh, yeah, I mean I, I think that's the plan. Like you can't really look at it look away from uh, where you're contracted to like um, I've got another year at Crawley at least um, so yeah I look to kind of go back whenever we get told we can go back and uh, obviously keep fit in the meantime and and look forward to next season really and uh, I'm hoping that I can get a full season in the Football League because it'll be my full season first full season in the Football League um, and I believe that hopefully when I do that then, then I'll be able to kick on again and and maybe get an opportunity to to go to the next level. Um, that's my ambition and, and my goal. Um, and I think Crawley's a really good club to be able to do that at. Um, obviously, I'm grateful for the opportunity they've given me to come from Maidstone in the National League to to League Two. Um, and I think that that they can give me the platform to kind of 
to kick on and do well. And I think our squad at Crawley, to be fair, is good. Like we've been competing really, really well. Like just before the lockdown, um, like like I mentioned about all the shot kind of stats wise and whatever else. Like we were we were one of the top teams in the league, um, probably before before the lockdown hit. So if we can keep doing that next season, which I'm sure we can, there's no reason why Crawley can't be kind of challenging uh, for playoffs. Uh, do you want to go for your best 11? Yeah, so like, I had a little think about um, best 11. Um, and it's really hard to kind of veer away from somewhere yeah. where you had a lot of success. Okay, yeah, yeah true. Um, it's tough because like when you've shared like so many games with like the same personnel and like you kind of have that bond and that kind of affiliation with them... Um, and then obviously been promoted and then got in playoffs again. It's it's hard to really kind of come away from it. So like, there's like so for the goalkeeper, like for example, like Glenn Morris at Crawley, like is unbelievable goalkeeper, like fantastic goalkeeper. I thought that um, Mitch Walker was was an incredible keeper at, at Aldershot. But um, in my best eleven that I've played with, like this is senior like kind of first team games because <laughs> played with some like some good names like. Uh, as a as a youngster, but senior like first team games like Nathan Ashmore um, would be my goalkeeper. Um, obviously, class keeper like um, made some really really good good saves for us. Or not even good saves like he, he had like some really good games for us. Like the whole game where he was just incredible. Even like the last ten fifteen minutes of the Chelsea game. Yeah, like if you if you actually watch that last ten fifteen minutes, he made so many like catches and and claims and stuff, and just like so much like pressure relieving moments that he, that he gave us, and he's a very very good keeper. Like one of them keepers where like in training, like you'd find it hard to like score against him. So when you did, like you'd celebrate and stuff. <laughs> but um, yeah, so Ash would be in goal. Um, similar, like sticking to like the absolute thing, like. Obviously, I played with Carlos Edwards at Millwall, who's like very, very good. Had a really good career, like very good for very good right back. Um, but Marvin McCoy, like uh, at Ebsley, was was really good in our promotion season. Um, I'd probably go with Marvin. Um, technically good, quick, strong, like pretty decent in the air. Like never really got beat one v one, hardly ever. Um, so Marvin McCoy. Then I'd say probably the most effective centre half that I've played with. Um, not like necessarily like technically the the greatest centre half, but he could play like he was decent on the ball. Like Kenny Clark, like just so much pace. Like never never seen him get beaten behind. Like just was really good for us again. So Kenny would be one of my centre halves. Um, Obviously, then the other centre halves hard like Dave Winfield, like was good, like good leader, um, like he was a beast. Um, but thinking about the centre half, like I started to think about kind of like my Millwall days and stuff, and I'm not really. There's not too many players apart from like the standouts that I'd really put in my eleven from Millwall because um, I didn't really play that many games, and like we wasn't that like, really successful. Um, and then, like even like the Crawley lads now, like obviously I haven't really played too many games with them, but we've got a couple of like very good centre halves at, at Crawley. Um, so yeah, with that, I actually I haven't actually written it down, but I'll probably go with um, Dave Winfield as my other centre half. Goal I know it's all, huh? Goal scorer as well. That's what I mean. Yeah, so he scored two massive goals for us like in my time. At, um, uh, obviously, obviously the Chelmsford, Chelmsford game, and um, I think he scored a winner against Maidenhead as well. He's got a winner against Maidenhead. That was the last game of the season, I think. Second last game. Yeah. Second last game winner against Maidenhead. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Like thinking about that, like some massive goals that he scored, and that's not even obviously his best attributes. Do you know what I mean? So, um, yeah. Like even though it's all Wesley at the minute, like <laughs> probably put Dave. Davis centre half, um, because obviously as well, like you're looking at over the course of the season, not just like one performance that you've seen a player. That's why like my left back, it's hard because like now that like, is a standout at Millwall who was like Scott Malone, who like has gone on like to Derby now. Like is very good fullback, pace, 
good on the ball. Um, played with him on like my championship debut. He scored in that game. Um, and then obviously Jack Connors, who like done well for us. Um, Bushy like done well for us at left back, even though he's a centre half. Um, Bushy's a good mention of a centre half because like he's he's got everything like you would you would want really as a centre half like great technique, good in the air, um, free kick taker, phys- physically good, nearly as good as me at free kicks. <laughs> uh, no, I'm joking. <laughs> no, exactly good free kick taker. Scored a lot of goals for Bromley last season uh, from centre half, so he's another one. But yeah, um, Scott Malone's like a standout, so maybe I'd go with Scott Malone. Scott Malone. Um, Harsh on that, like, Jack Connors, obviously. Um, midfielders wise, I'd definitely probably put Sam De- Sam Deeran in the team. Um, either like out off off the left or like a number ten. Like he was amazing for us. Um, just so good, like small, but that like, had a decent leap. Like technically good, good off both feet. He's got massive goals for us. Um, that one I remember a game against St Albans where he basically just won that game on his own when they were supposed to be decent as well. He scored for like the halfway line from kickoff. <coughs> so Sam Deering, um, a standout from Mill, Sean Williams, um, a centre midfield player, plays for Ireland, um, left footed. He'll be centre midfield, um, very good player. Um, I'm not going to put any of the Crawley lads in because I, I, I haven't started too many games with them. Obviously, I need to really train with them. Um, obviously, there are some good players at Crawley, but I'm going to stick to kind of the successful ones or the standouts at Millwall. Um, then, obviously, another wide player like Sean Shields, like, so, like amazingly talented like, player. Um, didn't play like loads and loads of games for for Ebsley in terms of starts but um, he's probably someone that gets a mention um, I'm trying to just go through the players that really spring to mind without kind of going for a formation too much it's so hard to actually when you do this like to actually pick a formation and pick like pick players as well um, obviously Jury, Rancy that all get mentions midfield as well um, but yeah I'd probably go with Maybe Sam Deering on the left or the right. I'll probably go on the left because he's right footed. I like my players like out wide to come inside and, and whatever else. So um, I'd go with my little boys running in again. <laughs> you can leave that on there, don't worry. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so Sam Deering on the left, uh, Sean Williams, centre midfield. Um, Probably go with Dukesy, to be fair. Sean Williams, Dukesy in the middle. So say we're doing a 4-4-2 and then we'll do right mid and then two strikers. Yeah, all right. We'll do that. Yeah, so we'll go Sam Deering, um, Sean Williams, Andy Drury. Um, right midfield. Mm-hmm. Obviously, we've, we had, like I say, we had Shieldsy, we had Cookie. Thompson, Whiteley. Some good wingers to be fair. Awesome, Whiteley. Yeah, we had some good players. Like you're, you're getting a few like spring into mind, making it even more difficult now. <laughs> um, and then, like even like I, I wouldn't put him in the team, but just thinking about it, when he came, like just for a couple of games, Rhys Alassane was like right. unbelievable, like a Dagenham, but then didn't really play. Like. After that, got injured and whatever else. So, like, that's tough. But um, oh, I'm going to have to make a decision right midfield. There's no real standout, like, kind of forward players at Millwall at the time. So, I wouldn't go with one of them. Um, I think, I think, I think I'll probably go with course, like, out wide. Luke Horson. Or Shieldsy, I don't know, hard, but um, cool slack, kind of got a couple more goals and whatever else, so obviously scored that goal against Tranmere as well. Um, and then up front, probably definitely Keds, 
just like enjoyed like he set up a lot of my goals at Absolute. Like he always used to remind me of that. Like he probably set up more like strangely he set up more goals for me than I did for him. Um but yeah, like it's just a good like you could just like just smash the ball at him anywhere, like his touch is so good, like just like obviously physically like you wouldn't think that he's like fit or whatever else but like he just he done really well so like definitely probably Keds up front um and again like played some good good players at Millwall but none that really kind of like stand out and like one that scored really good goals like um like players that played in the Premier League like Ricardo Fuller um we had a player called Magai Gay who played for Everton in the Premier League um, like really good players um, probably a few more like Aidan O'Brien like a really really good player very good player like I played with at Millwall young lad um, but never really played many first team games with him um, obviously Aaron McLean had a great career um, probably had better days at Ebsley like before I came I think the season before I came he was really good yeah, didn't he? Say that again. You had quite a long injury. Um, yeah, so he had that long injury like just after I came. Or the season that I came, he had that injury. Um, so it's a shame didn't really see the best of him. Um, but I think probably because they were, they were good together as well, probably Darren McQueen. Go over Darren McQueen up, up front, like sharpshooter, um, good finisher, could score just out of anything, like in five of sides and stuff like he was just so bouncy that like, he could just like score the most unorthodox goals. Um, and him and Keds, what well, Keds played together, obviously Darren's pace in behind and and that's so. a yeah. I go with Darren McQueen up top. There's probably some people that I forgot to mention, maybe. And if anyone sees it, they'll probably let me know. But um, I don't think Dino will be too happy. Yeah, he won't be happy, <laughs> especially after playing with him all the shots as well. Um, but I'll, t- I'll tell him to be honest I'll tell him why and he knows why because st- the style of play that I'd like to play he does a certain job but it's not what I like and I'll tell him that anyway <laughs> uh, so yeah that's that's my that's my team yeah. this, this one should be a bit easier who, who have you got managing that team? you were expecting me to say Daryl McMahon <laughs> maybe, maybe I'm expecting a middle one I don't know <laughs> no, nah, yeah, um, yeah, Daryl McMahon, that like, uh, most successful manager that I played under, obviously, really good, like great coach, that like, best best sessions, like best best training sessions, um, and to be honest, that like, now I'm playing under under a good guy at, um, at Crawley. Um, he knows his stuff and that, and good assistant manager at Crawley. Um, but yeah, like I'd say that McMahon's probably like a. Obviously, they've got like big name like Holloway. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, had an amazing career. But like I say, I didn't get to spend enough time um, playing under him to really kind of get the full kind of capacity of what he was about. So he's probably like McMahon's probably like the standalone like. Manager, like only one person really can put up for that job, especially because basically the whole team is is his team anyway. So, um, with those couple additions that I mentioned, um, we probably would have beat Tramir. Yeah. No, I'm joking. Um, but yeah, no, yeah, Darren McMahon's the manager of that team. Um, final question before you go: uh, What is the best moment in your career so far? I got asked this recently, actually, and like. It's really hard to pick between um, the playoff final like, as a whole um, and the cha- my championship debut against against Blackpool. An actual the moment I would say is I, I set up the first goal um, in my Mill debut um, from a, a like a routine free kick where um, <laughs> he's back again. Yeah, routine free kick or we worked on in training ground, which is always nice, like where I just pulled it back to Scott McDonald and he slotted it slotted it in from a free kick. Um so that moment, probably on my championship debut getting an assist. Um but those two like kind of spectacles, it's hard to choose uh between the two of them. 
We'll see. Uh, big thanks for coming on, Jack. Um, no worries. With uh, Crawley. If you're wondering where Sam is, he, we've lost him because of his McDonald's Wi Fi. But uh, obviously, all the best, Jack. Thanks, thanks for coming on. Uh, and nice one, mate. Uh, Crawley next season. Take care, mate. Thanks. Cheers, Jack. See you later.